Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. Uh, the show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it is then posted to our website and our archives for you to watch at your convenience. <coughs> And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archived recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries, similar to your whatever state library. So we provide services to all types of libraries in Nebraska, and so we'll have topics on our show for all types of libraries. Um, so there'll be something for everyone here, public, academic, K-12, corrections, museums, archives. Um, really our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. Uh, something cool that libraries are doing. We bring in guest speakers sometimes to come and talk about things they're doing in your libraries. Uh, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of various products and services we may offer here through the Library Commission or things we think might be good for any libraries to have. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do presentations for us, and we have um, we bring guest speakers from all across the country. Um, and today we have a mixture of that. Uh, today, it is the last Wednesday of the month, so that means it's Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Yay! Uh, Pretty Sweet Tech, that is our once a month, um, last Wednesday of the month session with Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Hi, Amanda. Hello. And she comes on with us once a week, once a month, not once a week, <laughs> once a month. To I talk about say. <laughs> techie related. Uh, so if you're a tech person in your library or interested in that kind of thing, this is definitely a show to um, pay attention to and be on with. She comes on other times too, but um, always the last Wednesday of the month, she should be with her. What be with here? He, be here with us. Oh my gosh! I need more coffee or less? I don't know. <laughs> always more. <laughs> True. Uh, and uh, today we're going to be talking with Amanda about um, 3D meetings, uh, something that should be fun, interesting, weird, depending on your point of view. Um, we'll see how that all works. Um, I'll just hand over to you, Amanda, to talk about that and introduce Chad and what he's uh, got for us here today. Cool. So we're going to talk about spatial. And so spatial isn't specifically an app for librarians. It'd be awesome if it were. But <laughs> spatial is just a 3D meeting space that pretty much anyone in any industry can hop into. And you can put on a VR headset and explore a virtual meeting space. Or you can use an augmented reality version of it to be able to project different objects into the world around you so that you can augment what you're already working with. I actually found out from Spatial from Chad from the Computers and Libraries Conference. So we brought him in to kind of help us learn more about it. And he knows way more about it than I do. He's been using it forever, or at least <laughs> it feels like it. So yeah. Chad, would you want to introduce yourself? Sure, yes. Hi, um, my name's Chad Marin. Um, I'm sick today. I'm going to try not to cough too much into this microphone. And if I do, I'll cover it. So sorry about that in advance. Um, yeah, so I'm a librarian. I uh, work at St. Petersburg College in Florida, and I also manage the Innovation Lab, which is a space that allows us to, well, I don't have a budget, so I write grants, but it allows us to bring in emerging technologies like virtual reality and augmented reality, 3D printing, robotics, that sort of thing, to introduce to people so they can kind of see what's possible with technology. You know, because a lot of people don't have access to this stuff, but now through the library system, they actually do. So it's a really, it's a, it's a great job because I get to kind of experiment with all this stuff and then share it with people. Um, and so it's a wonderful thing. So, so yeah, um, let's go ahead and hop into the, the presentation, if you don't mind. So uh, the agenda today is we're going to talk a little bit about XR and how it's changing the world, and it really is. Um, and so XR, and I have another slide in a minute, but it's virtual, augmented, and mixed realities. And then after a little bit of, of presenting this traditional way, um, we're gonna actually hop into spatial. Now, you don't have to have a VR headset. Um, it's more immersive and uh, engaging if you actually do. 
but just know that you don't have to, and their system's getting a lot better. So oh. um, go ahead and go back oh. to what XR is, if you don't mind. Yeah, I was going to go to the slide that had the compatible devices, but the videos tripped me up. Oh, yeah, that, that'll happen. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, we'll get back to that in a sec. Um, but what I wanted to briefly discuss is just what XR is. And it really, it just stands for extended reality. And that X is a variable for anything, really. And I, I'm always trying to think, what's it gonna, what's that X gonna stand for in like 10 years? You know, with like volumetric video and all this crazy stuff happening, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be the metaverse. But mm -hmm. we'll talk about that in a second too. But yeah. right now. That's interesting. Uh -huh. I've always, you've heard of VR and AR. I didn't know those, but then when you know the spatial talks about XR, I had no idea that there was this whole concept beyond those. Yeah. 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 So it's it's so right now it it includes 360 degree imagery, 360 VR, which is sort of like uh, you know Google Cardboard and that sort of thing, and then you've mm -hmm. got true VR, um, which is where we're going to be later, and then augmented reality. Um, just think Pokemon Go for that. Um, mixed reality and spatial computing are very, very similar. Mixed, com mixed reality is more the Microsoft terminology, and spatial computing is, is Magic Leap. They all do the same thing, so they're kind of mixing both worlds, um, so it's pretty cool. And then you got holograms. So anyway, all of that right now is the full spectrum of what's called immersive technology, so you're kind of the, in the surrounded digital space. So yeah, can you hit the next slide? And did you want to talk a little bit about this, Amanda? Yeah, so one of the major questions I get is, okay, so cool augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, they're all really cool, but why do they actually matter? What are we doing with it? So they did like a massive stir um, survey through Statistica and they've done one through Deloitte and they've done one through basically all those major tech companies or consulting companies and they pinpointed the major industries that are being impacted by AR, VR, XR, all the R's. And so they found out that right now healthcare and medical devices is like the number one industry that's being changed. And Chad, I know that you have an example that's coming out of healthcare later on so you get to see a little glimpse into that. And so a lot of what's happening in Nebraska and kind of around the manufacturing area right now is in workforce development and training and in manufacturing instruction. So you can hold up your little augmented reality device in front of all those complicated machines and it'll pop up little digital labels that'll show you how to dismantle everything, how to work all the little complex pieces and how everything fits together. It kind of improves the learning curve and just makes it way easier to use all this tech stuff and all these different systems and devices. So and it's kind of adding on, that hands-on experience with it more. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And of course, marketing advertising. You may have seen like the YouTube clip of um, um, I forget which company it was, but they projected like little spaceships all over London. So that whenever you look through a massive screen that was by a bus stop in London, you just, it was basically like War of the Worlds. And it was like the coolest thing on the planet. Well, so I was gonna say, that's not terrifying at all. <laughs> no, never. No. Spoiler, it wasn't real. <laughs> but so these are some of the major industries that are being impacted by it. Um, I put the link down below. Um, this is actually a screenshot because I put this together in Canva, but I can put the link in later on in the chat when Chad's going when Chad's going over the next slides. So this is just spoiler alert of the industries that are being impacted. And I'll mention too, while we're talking about the links and slides and whatnot, um, links to the slide will be available to everyone afterwards with the archive. So don't worry about trying to scribble down all these URLs and things. We'll have them included in that as well for you um, to be able to get to anything you want to. Okay, and so I wanted to, to add just a little bit more. So education is a is a big part of it, I think. Um, I mean, yeah. healthcare and all that is, but with libraries, um, we are educators. Um, librarians are educators. We have been since the beginning of time. Um, I, I work in a joint use library, so I uh, work with academics and uh, the public, which I love. Um, but I wanted just to highlight a couple reports that you might wanna skim through. Um, very telling stuff in here. So the first one, I'm sure you all have heard of the Horizon Report. 
Um, this, is, if you haven't, check it out um, if you want to keep up with tech. Uh, but they've done two reports. One is learning in three dimensions, and then the other one is XR for teaching and learning. And so I think there's a huge potential for education in this XR space. Um, just think for one example is um, with with VR, like I can magnify a heart and walk into it and learn all about it that way. So if I do that, if I walk into a heart, I'm going to I'm going to remember that experience. Right. Um, I can read about the functions of the heart. It's going to take me personally a m multiple times of reading that to really get it. Whereas if I'm in VR space or AR space and I'm, you know, interacting with the heart and taking it apart and watching the blood flow, you know, I'm going to remember that experience. So anyway, these are two really good reports that you might want to kind of skim through and see what else is going on in education with regards to XR. Uh, next slide, please. And so if you want to dig deeper into what virtual reality actually is, I also have a little collection of curated resources that will help you kind of dig into that, see some examples. And so you can kind of, this is your little refresher about what it is, some little use cases, and just a variety of different things that you might want to try in the library with that. So if you want to explore and dig deeper and do things beyond spatial or including spatial, this is a good space to go. Um, and just a concept I wanted to include is, and I get this question all the time, which is why I added this slide. Um, so you've got three DOF and six DOF. So three degrees of freedom is my, um, Google Cardboard. So you know you're using your phone and you're moving it around. So the space is kind of static, and you're moving or you know, or you're moving the space with you as you look around. And you can see you've only got three degrees of freedom. Now virtual reality is six degrees of freedom. So you can see you can actually walk into space, you can move back and forth, you can look all around and that sort of thing. So I just wanted to bring those two concepts into play. Um, six DOF obviously is way more immersive and interactive. Nothing wrong with three degrees of freedom, nothing wrong with it at all. You still can do some amazing things and experience some amazing things that way. Um, but just I wanted to pinpoint the two, the two differences for you. Uh, next slide, please. Well, and you can also see the evolution of this in Oculus Go to Oculus Quest. Because yeah. Oculus Go was three degrees of freedom, then Quest shifted up to six degrees. Yeah. And it was awesome. Totally awesome. Yeah. Um, so sort of what we're doing today, this this is I always show this too, because this was um actually right before the pandemic. And you can see on the left and the right, this was in Tampa, Florida. And so a lot of people actually had VR headsets. And then that guy in the middle is me, and I'm in a, in a hotel room in New York City. Um, and first off, I'll say the, the wireless was actually able to handle it, which was amazing, because we all know hotel Wi-Fi is not good usually. Um, but what was cool is I was in my hotel room presenting to this group in Tampa, but there was also people from all over the world in this 3D meeting space. So back then, um, spatial was really early. They weren't really out yet, um, kind of just a, a concept at the time. Um, but uh, Doghead Simulations had a, um, an application called Roomy, and very similar, but it was a cool way to, to present um, inside VR to kind of explain what VR is. So we had a good turnout. Um, I wasn't obviously in that room, um, which made it even cooler, you know, because I felt like I was in that room with those people. Uh, next slide, please. And so this is another example of the augmented reality that I popped in there. And so you're going to see kind of like the next evolution of augmented reality in the video that Chad's going to play. But this is also another version of how AR is impacting health industry and education. Um, this is an education tool that is used, I believe it was in Finland, and it's basically labeling things so that you get like the visual demonstration and those little audiovisual cues of what's going on inside the human body. So it's kind of another way to learn and explore and experience. And I'm going to skip over this slide because Chad already kind of went over it. Um, this is the example of the mixed reality that we talked about. Um, they're actually viewing this object through the HoloLens 2 headset, and this is actually what they're using in manufacturing and retail and in architecture to be and in interior design to be able to imagine and explore a space. 
So when people start learning this stuff in different symposiums like this and start gaining exposure to the equipment, then they're able to start exploring it, how it relates to them in their industry and be able to just use it out in the wider world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here are, the, here are the videos. So the first one I'm gonna show is, yeah, and this was a co-location study. So this is a program called Anatomy X. And um, so I'm gonna go ahead, oh, I'm clicking it, clicking it, clicking it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, if you don't mind hitting that one real quick, if it's gonna run, there we go. So this is, so me and one of my interns were, uh, this is one of our meeting rooms, and this is a three-dimensional cadaver in our space. And as you can see, I'm looking, I'm wearing a hollow lens, and he's wearing a magic leap. We're both looking at this object in the same space. And so as we look through this, you can see it's it's dissolving. Um, I'm gonna completely remember this experience now. And as you can see, it's yeah. kind of hard to see in the video, but as I'm looking at different parts of the body, you can see it labeling in real time. Mm -hmm. um, so, so this was a co-location experiment just to see if we could have two different headsets on, uh, both looking at the same content, um, which is really cool. Now we're in the same room. Uh, all, all this is voice activated stuff too, by the way, so I could speak and tell it what to do and it would do it. Um, what's really cool when you do this kind of stuff is when you're not in the same room with, this, with the person, you can do it globally and it's just like you're both in that spot. Um, and if you could play the other video, what was weird, I just put my hand up like that, and did you notice the video did the same thing? That was weird. <laughs> anyway, um, and if you can hit the second one for me. This is a similar deal. I've got, this is two students. One's wearing a Magic Leap and the other one's wearing a HoloLens. Same room. I'm using a, an iPad just so I can kind of see what's going on. And um, so this is what they're seeing. This is a large heart that they can actually look at. Um, and they're both wearing different headsets. So this is a co-location experiment too. So they're both studying for an anatomy and physiology exam. Um, and they came back and told me they aced the test. They said it's way better than those models that they have to use um, because they can make this as big as they need to make it. Um, so that was pretty cool. And we all know that a lot of libraries, especially academic libraries, um, have to circulate uh, 3D models, um, we do, and after a while that takes up a lot of space, storage space. So now with something like this, you can have all of these digital cadavers and, and um, anatomy models uh, stored digitally um, where students can actually access it. So, and it's not going to replace the 3D model, but this is a lot more interactive and students do get more out of it, at least my experience so far. So next slide, please. It started replaying again. Yeah. So um, this, if you have, uh, what channel was that? I forget what it was. 60 Minutes Plus is, oh, Paramount is like a, I got a free subscription just to watch okay. this special. Um, and they were talking about the metaverse. And it was interesting because if you think about it, you know, Web 1.0 was the internet. Like, here's your internet, have fun, right? And then libraries, especially remember the whole library 2.0 movement um, when Web 2.0 came out. And so that was, um, you know, we started having mobile and this huge social connection now. Um, you know, social media started to take off and we were sharing more and all this. Um, so the next phase, I don't know if it's going to be called Web 3.0, but we're starting to see this metaverse now. So sort of like this Ready Player One concept, which is really not far away. Um, you know, I think uh, mm -hmm. I think we were all talking recently about Second Life. You know, Second Life was mm -hmm. right around the Web 2.0 era, and a lot of library systems were in that space. It made sense because that's mm -hmm. where people were. Um, but this metaverse is really going to be everywhere, and we're starting to see cryptocurrencies and all this stuff in that space and people are buying artwork and and doing things all in this metaverse and so i read an article briefly too which is interesting i think for libraries um is that eventually when we have you know glasses like this that do xr which they're coming they're they're actually here now you're going to be able to to do visual search sort of like google lens does um, but you're going to be able to just look at things and then bring that into your, your space because mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be digital. It's going to be um, kind of like a mirrored world, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So this whole concept of metaverse has been in sci-fi for, 
for a oh. really long time, but now we're starting to see it come to life. And it's and you'll you'll see a, a part of it um, when we go into spatial. Um, that's kind of like how the metaverse is going to be. Um, so pretty exciting stuff, I think. And that reminds me of this book I read. I found out about this book through the FabEx Live conference, and it's called Designing Reality. So this book talks a lot about how this, all of this XR, VR, um, industrial manufacturing, third digital revolution, how it's going to be changing everything. So if you do want to start talking about this in your own library, just having a book do book group discussion and just start bringing the conversation into your community is just an awesome way to go. So Good I idea. will copy this into the chat and give Chad his next slide. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so here's spatial AR. We're going to, the, so there's an AR version of spatial. So you can, and that was the first way I tested it. So I've been a beta tester for spatial for probably two years now. Um, fell in love with the company. The, the developers are great. Um, but it was AR at first. So when we first started testing it, I could be in my office. I could still see my office, but then all of these holograms from all over the world would be in my space and we could interact with all this, this content. Um, next slide, please. And then there's a VR component too. Um, at first, you know, when we were talking with the developers, they had no plan to be in VR. Um, and then the Quest came out. And it's a two, you know, three hundred dollar device versus you know thousands of dollars to get something going. Um, so then they chose to to bring it into VR too, and it was a smart move. So we'll get into the VR space here in a, in a few minutes. Now, if any of you want to test the the AR version, you you can do that too. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so here's just a couple images. So in the upper left hand corner is is Aaron, and I used to work with him. He was the project developer for a while. And that's my office, and we're meeting, and, and he actually looks just like that, by the way. It was weird because um, Aaron and I met in Spatial exclusively for probably a year and a half. And then we actually finally met in Zoom one day. He lives in San Francisco, um, across the country. And then when we finally met through Zoom, it was just odd. It's like we've, we've known each other forever because we, we look the same in VR, you know, or in this case, AR. And... Uh, a little side note is what's interesting is when he walked by me um, in AR space, I actually moved out of his way, thinking, he was, in the, yeah. thinking he was in the room with me. That's how realistic it is. Um, the lower left image shows that you can now interact with this content. So if, if Amanda and I and, and Krista and I are all in VR and you have your phone, you can you can interact with the content, the 3D content with your phone. Um, or you can do it in the browser as well. Um, the picture on the right is just showing you that um, all these holograms are meeting um, via different headsets. So that all those avatars. That was are, the question we had. Yeah. Do you? Does everybody have to be using the same product? But there's the no. answer. No. Nope. Not at all. Um, so we'll skip over that video. But there is a video there too that kind of shows. Um, when it first kind of came out and they were giving it the proof of concept. So it's changed a lot since then. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this was something I always like to point out because uh, so Spatial invited a bunch of, of early adopters and beta testers to come in and kind of hang out in one of their boardrooms to meet with Joanna Stern and Christopher Mims from the Wall Street Journal. And uh, on the left, picture is obviously spatial, but you can see um, Joanne uh, kind of sitting on the couch, it looks like. And so hanging out with her and talking to her in spatial, it just felt like we kind of knew one another. You know, after a while, you just, you're interacting in 3D space. It's just, it's very realistic. And then like a day or so later, I saw her on CNBC um, talking in real life. And I just felt like, hey, I know her, you know, it was just... It was just so odd to see her the day before in spatial and then the next day seeing her on CNBC. Really kind of interesting. So I just wanted to throw that in there. <clears throat> okay, next slide, please. And we kind of already alluded to this a little bit, but um, you can use spatial with uh, a tablet or your desktop computer, um, your mobile app. Um, you don't necessarily need to download Spatial, you can actually go to their web-based thing. The app is actually better though, but you can do it web-based. 
Um, and then really the most immersive way is to do it inside VR or to use an AR headset like a Magic Leap or a HoloLens if you have one. <clears throat> okay, next slide, please. And then there's some of the headsets that are compatible with spatial. Again, HoloLens, uh, Valve Index, Nreal. <clears throat> so those are the glasses that we're getting ready to see. They're still tethered. <clears throat> excuse me. They're still tethered to a like a hockey puck, kind of like the Magic Leap. Um, but pretty soon it's going to be a Bluetooth connection, I think, to your phone, because um, your phone's obviously very powerful and it can run a lot of the AR stuff. I mean, if you think about it, your phone can do AR now. Most phones can. So really the next step is to just kind of get the lens to your eyes instead of looking at your actual device. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, and N and Nreal is in pre-release, so you won't actually be able to go to a store and buy it right now. And HoloLens 2, you actually have to order through Microsoft. Mm -hmm. but, and the, the uh, HoloLens is very expensive, by the way. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, what the plan is, is so here's my quest. So in a few seconds, I'm going to hop in there. I'm going to turn it on now so I'm not waiting too long for it to load. Um, so if you haven't created an account yet, all you got to do is go to spatial.io. You can do that on your phone. You can do it on your desktop, whatever, um, mm -hmm. and then create an account. Um, and then they're going to prompt you to create a 3D avatar. What it does is it scans you, your face, basically, and it does a 3D um, rendering of it. And it actually looks pretty realistic. It um, does. I did mine. I did one when we were doing the test for this and mm -hmm. beforehand. So we did a tech test of this uh, before the show. And I will tell you this. I did multiple takes of my face because I didn't like I didn't, how it worked the first couple of times. It's kind of yeah. those you know, taking a selfie and you're like, oh, wait, no. <laughs> yeah. um, but you do have the option to do that. Yeah. And so for everyone who's logged into, I'll say I, I checked and all of you except one um, were pre-registered for today. And I sent you an email yes last night, well, yesterday afternoon, um, reminding you that there was a link um, the event page for this to get the same picture here that links to the spatial site and then i also included the link specifically to the room that says right there the i love spatial room will be going into i also just typed um that into the chat as well for anyone who didn't get set up and wants to try right now um to quickly get in and join um we're not going to move this show into spatial we're still broadcasting here through go to webinar um we're all going to stay here for the recording and keep it going but you can if you want to like in a separate window on your computer if you're doing that or on your phone if you're doing it that way go into the also the spatial one as well um up to you guys if you want to do that too. perfect um by the way if you if you do go in um like if you go into spatial.io then you click on the iLab spatial room you'll see in the upper right hand corner there's an option to pair your headset if you decide to do vr and what it's going to do it's going to give you like six numbers so when you go into spatial on your headset you're going to type in those numbers and then you're going to go right in um, if you're doing it just on the in the browser or on your phone, that link to iLab Spatial Room should bring you right in. Um, then you'll see there's options to turn on your microphone um, or turn on your video. If you are using your phone or a computer, I'm going to have like a webcam view of your video inside Spatial. <clears throat> so I'll still be able to see you. And then also once you've got everything going, um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. Um, you'll see when you kind of, if you're in VR, you kind of look down, these options pop up. You can search, you can add sticky notes, you can upload images and that sort of thing. And so you can do that same stuff, number seven, um, in the browser and on mobile. Mm -hmm. So I think what the plan is, I'm going to go ahead and turn my video off. Right, we can't use our cameras and go to webinar and in <laughs> We learned <Yeah>. that. <laughs> so I am going to fire up my headset and I'm going to log into, into Spatial. And so you'll see me still in um, in GoToWebinar or and or, I guess, um, if you're using it on the browser or however you decide to get in. So I will see you soon inside Spatial. Yeah. All right. I'm going to turn off my camera so because I've got mine going here. But um, Amanda, on your screen, are you, you're going to switch to sharing the Spatial desktop view or how are you? Is, and I was actually going to ask if you could share that on yours because sure. it did not. Yeah. Yep. Hang on a sec. 
because I've got my headset here and it looks way cooler to have two people in by a headset. All right, hold on just a second here. I am going to change presenter to me. There we go. All right, we're milking it here. All right. So, um, everyone, you should see this is the. And, and I'm going to wait for Chad to get in there. And I think I see some people starting to pop in here. And so I'm going to put my. There's a picture I took of myself to be the face of my. Oh, it looks weird. My zoom in too far. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. And I'm actually going to verify that we can still hear Chad's audio through this headset before I get into spatial through my headset. Otherwise, this will be a very quiet presentation. So let's make sure that his audio is going through here. Uh, Are you able to hear me? Oh, yes, and there's, hang on a sec here. Uh, yes, go ahead and try again. Hello, can you hear me? Are you able to hear me? Uh, uh, I heard myself. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, good. All right, um, we do have, hang on a sec, though. We do have some feedback though coming through from one. Just, just walk, walk. in. So, so what we're doing, we're trying to get you to the power wood here. So, so um, we we've got, got what we're going to do right now is uh, getting the 3D film, the BBD rule inside of this space, because there's a 3D artist in the BBD film. You know, that film uh, um, so we got a few of his, um, he calls them a particular difference. They don't look like a particular here. They don't really have to be back that way. So when you, so when you look, look at like one, this, one that the fish, fish is moving, moving, when you look, you look at that actual, actual space, space, it's every three dot glasses. That's really, really kind of a cool thing. thing. So, so this is this our experimental room. room. Um, you um, can see, see we, we, we all walk here. here. You guys should actually get a gun around. You can see there's another one of his prints here. Um, kind of looks 3D, um, but, it, but it, it's moving, moving. Um, really kind of cool, cool, I think. Then, then um, over here, here is another one of his work. So you can see, you, you, can, do you can do a lot of things. You can do, um, you know, you know, you know, you know, type places. places. I can create, I can, create, I can, I can go into a war room, room here, here, and then, then it look more, more like, like an office, office type of thing. thing. Um, but like, I kind of prefer being in this space. space. Um, you can, you can do, do some kind of somebody, somebody do some some group group in here, here. here. And you, you can see one, one piece now, now like kind of small, I like a large, right? right. So you, so you kind of do that. that. Um, um, you can you also, also bring in your own 3D content. content. So, so I think I'm going to talk about, about maybe doing a maker space showcase here, where, you know, sort of like we're doing now, but but that way you're going to bring in like content like this. 
Here's our 3D. I'm going to bring this back over here into the middle. Um, so here we go. So you've got your 3D model here. Right? And I can, and by the way, I'm going to work on making these animated. So eventually you can add your animated objects in here too. So this this would be moving. Um, so again, you can convince this. I know, it's going to be great. So like I mentioned, uh, we brought in our 3D model of our museum. Um, it's sort of like this, right? This is it, obviously. But then you just kind of, you, you give it with variables like that it needs, or the coordinates that it needs. You can basically set that down on the floor and you want it. You get it perfect. And then you set that down as your environment. And you know that well, you're more walking around the space, which is really kind of cool with um, processing. Also, let's move this guy out of the way. So I already mentioned the sphere. So this, so another example of what you do in education, and I, uh, so I had the student reach out to me, and so I'm holding this little sphere here, and she wanted to do something a little bit more interesting for her astronomy class. And I said, well, what do you do in your research on? And she was doing it on one of the galaxies. And I said, okay, well, so I went out and found a 360 image. Well, actually, I take it back. It wasn't a 360 image. It was a regular linear image of a bunch of galaxies. Like this. So then I went in and I did a 360. And then you, there's a, there's a data file, and then there's a, um, a texture file, and then the actual image, and you put that all together in a GLB file, right? And I can give you instructions for anything that you're interested in. And what's cool is that when you do that, you create a stock box, which is what this is. It's like a little sphere. And so what we ended up doing is looking at it this way, but then we took it and expanded it to this point where we were all inside it. So we got our here, I guess. Um, and so now, this is actually, by the way, this is really weird because this is how you do it in a big, big room. This is a little blurry here today. I don't know why, but anyway, so um, this was now a uh, planetarium. So we created a planetarium. And we think we have a room that doesn't have a lot of furniture in it. So we can actually look around in this way. She was able to record what she was looking at and kind of pinpoint the different parts of the galaxy. And it's a little long because this is a little right now. But anyway, um, it was a really kind of a cool way for her uh, to show off. Um, so instead of being instead of being on sort of the cloud doing a presentation, she got she got to go to our VR and present that present that way, and then um, she actually recorded she actually recorded it too for those that want more cloud capturing. So you can do a lot of stuff with this. And let's see, so there's that. Um, I had my oh yeah, oh, yeah. My presentation, presentation like, like this is this is the presentation we talked about earlier today. So you can bring in that and make it as big as you need to make it. And it, it looks, looks pretty, pretty good. Still. So you even though it's very large, large, I can then um, go through my presentation if I want. And it's just like we were just looking at. So I can, in theory, in theory present in here. And she does that quite a bit, to be honest. Um, what, what a better place to learn about VR than actually in VR, right? So, um, this is a really cool way to kind of bring that in. Now, for those of you that are in VR, um, if you look down, and then again, you can use this on desktop, you can also do it in um, on your phone. You'll see a little blue dot. If you select that, you'll see that you've got an uh, option to mute. You've got an uh, option to mute. You can just draw on the note if you want. Or you can select the microphone and do voice activated um, notes if you want. So if you don't want to draw or whatever you can do that um and then you can take that note and put it on the wall here if you want right so you have like a community wall um that you can add all kinds of stuff to if you need to um you can also if you look down and you click on content there's uh, ways to search for things so you can search on the web you can open up a browser you can do a share screen so if you're out on the web on the on a browser, you can share your screen, and we would see what you're actually looking at on your screen. It also integrates Google Drive, uh, integrates Microsoft 365, Slack, Figma, and just recently NFTs. So there's a big push now. That whole metaverse thing we talked about earlier 
um, you can now um, purchase things, uh, you know, um, through like NFTs, through like cryptocurrencies and that kind of thing, Ethereum and all that right inside here. So they're doing a lot of um, galleries. You will have to go to your desktop to go to like spatial IO slash integrations, and then you can integrate all that. Um, what's cool is like if I go into Drive, for example, I can click on Drive, and they don't have a good search function yet, but if I go in and um, I want to kind of browse through, through um, and, and um, so I can now click on this, and it'll take a second, but now you can see I've just brought make that as big as I need to make it and then hit play. It might take a second because I, oh, it actually went pretty quick. So there's my little video. Oh, cool, I can see people actually moving around and bringing some stuff in, that's awesome. Um, I will say they just made a new update. So if you have an, if you have a, I forget what iPhone it is, but the iPhone that has the LiDAR scanning capabilities on it, you can now use the app um, and do a LiDAR scan of your room, for example, or a piece of furniture or whatever it is, the, the uh, iOS um, uh, LiDAR scanner is pretty awesome. And then you can scan it and whatever you want, you can then bring it in here and it looks very realistic. Um, so if you have a new iPhone, I don't, my daughter does, so I, I will be borrowing that from her soon. <laughs> um, but that's just, uh, it's just the tip of the iceberg, I think, at this point. Um, and I don't so, know if you've seen it yet, but they added the new function for if you're searching for images on your phone, they added 3D images too. So if you just search for Bulbasaur, and there's a little 3D Bulbasaur that you can pop in. Oh, do you have, do you have that handy? Are you able to do that? Yeah, I'm grabbing them now. So now what I'm hoping is now that they're doing 3D images, I keep asking them about 3D video. So if you guys want to come over here, I'll show you. So this is, I did a video of me looking at this 3D film in VR, which is over here. Now, obviously, it's not 3D. Um, there are applications that will do it in 3D. Um, big screens, for example, will play 3D films. And it's amazing, actually. I don't know if you've tried it yet or not, but it's amazing. Um, and also... Uh, how what's the other one called? There's another app that I've been using too that will display 3D film in VR, um, and it looks pretty good. But I want to I want it to all be in one space. So again, that that video on the back wall over here is a recording I did of of his video, his 3D film inside VR. So hopefully we'll get that figured out. Um, a little side note though. Um, we weren't, the museum was not able to get a 3D projector or a 3D television. Um, there was a software out there um, that took his stereoscopic video and um, puts it into an anaglyph. So now we're able to just use any display um, for 3D film, except for what's in here. So hopefully that'll be figured out soon. Um, so yeah, so it just kind of just spatial, I think, kind of takes, you know, the whole virtual meeting uh, to a whole new level. Um, you know, Zoom after a while gets kind of, you have like Zoom fatigue, I guess, you know, everything's <laughs> just two dimensional. Mm -hmm. um, but what's cool now is, you know, you can actually be in a space like this and you can bring in 3D content or um, some design that you're working on that you want to all look at together. So, uh, um, yeah, tons of possibilities in here. Good. And if you explore, somewhere in this room, I have added a field of Bulbasaurs. <laughs> oh, I see them. <laughs> there they are. Is that them? Oops. <laughs> and here he is. There they are. My son would love this. They're just and then again, yep, yeah, you can make them as big as you want. Oops. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of possibilities in this space. Um, you can bring audio in here, by the way. This uh, has audio. Let me see if I can get a little closer to it. So, 
So, by the way, this the artist I'm working with is Louis Marcoya. Let me turn. Let me pause that. Uh, um, the artist I'm working with is Louis Marcoya. Um, what's really cool is um, when I first met with him, I had no idea he was a protege of Salvador Lee. So, so it's been really an honor working with this guy. So, and it's also cool because he just gives me access to all his his artwork and lets me bring it in here and kind of experiment with it. Um, not all of it's going to be moving like this. A lot of it's just static. So. Hey, Jason, I see you over there. How are you doing? <laughs> hey, Chad. How's it going? Hey, Jason. It is moving along, sir. Wanted to good. see what you were up to today. Oh, good. I'm glad you came in. Hey, Jason. This is Krista. Yeah, so we're just kind of hanging out in here, showing everybody um, what can be done in this space. So does anybody have any questions or comments? I've been talking too much, especially with my cold. I know I sound... Uh, so oh, you here. sound fine. Hey, Jason, this is Krista. <laughs> hey, Krista. Hi, how are you doing? We're exploring uh, spatial for the first time on my Encompass Live show today. Mm -hmm. So say hi to everybody. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I, saw, I saw your tweet. That's why I'm here. Oh, cool. <laughs> awesome. And just so you guys know, um, they, are, they have speech captioning now. Um, as part, that's not part of the free version. Um, which I think is really cool because then you can, um, I think they're working on that uh, multi-language support too, which uh, huh. would be pretty cool. That was a question yeah. we did have was sure. like, that was a question we had. What is the cost that we're talking about here with using this? Like, I'm, I did not pay anything to get in here. And those of you joining us didn't either, obviously. It's free. Yeah, there's, yeah, they have a couple different tiers. They have um, the free tier, which, which you can do pretty much most anything you'd need to do really um and then they have like an enterprise tier which it's got single sign-on and all that stuff um mm -hmm. i'll be honest with you I've, i haven't had to knock on wood have to sign in in quite a while so um and it's attached to my school account so i just log into my school and i'm already seamlessly logged into this too. yeah i noticed that when i um, came in here it a, already had me logged in um yeah, I didn't have to re-log in. Yeah. yeah. Really so really, the, the cost would be if you're getting out. those virtual, getting an actual, the actual headset if you wanted that. Yeah, yeah. And it is, I mean, I will say I've been in meetings in this, in this space, <laughs> excuse me, in this space for, you know, an hour at a time. And I never get to, it depends on what the meeting's about, to be honest, but um, it never gets, it never gets old. Like it's mm. just a different way to interact and I can hand things to people. We can, we can do high fives. You know, <laughs> there's a, a, a haptic thing they have going on now. That's pretty, uh, pretty responsive. Um, you know, and this is just the beginning. Um, I, I can see a, just a ton of potential mm -hmm. for something like this. And that is something we have, Amanda, we are, more. sorry, go ahead, Amanda. But if you're looking for kind of a beginner way to introduce your community to spatial, there's also, I put together like a mini lesson plan with like um, challenges that you can ask people to do, like add the Bulbasaur in the corner or add That's a picture cool. on the wall mm -hmm. and nice. just kind of give people an idea of what it can do and then start to contextualize it in how they're going to use it. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in a public library, you'll have people from small businesses that are coming in. You'll have people that are going to a local school. You'll just have people from all walks of life who want to use it in a variety of different ways. And that's true of academic libraries and pretty much any library on the planet. Is mm -hmm. People are going to look at this and say, I know what I can do with that. And once yeah. you get like that little stepping stone of just ways that they can do it and start getting people together, People can do some awesome stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I said, uh, um, good point for sure. And and you know the fact that that I'm working with this this guy Rick who uh, is got a three. I mean he did he designed or took made a carbon copy basically of our museum and and brought it in here. Um, and then we're basically we're walking around our museum like we're actually there, which is uh, amazing. So with, wow. with education you can you can do a lot so we could create like a surgery room if we wanted to or um 
you know, a machine shop. So for education, we can then, you know, uh, be in different rooms, different classrooms. So that's, uh, I know I've got one provost right now that's very interested in that concept. And they're looking at, you know, maybe using CARES Act funding for it. Um, oh, nice. Yeah. Which would be really kind of cool. So we'll see what the future brings with that. Yeah, and so Amanda, for as far as the um, virtual headsets, I, I know you have tech kits of those. Are they being lent out yet? I do. Um, they're actually all already out. Oh, all right, um, nice, yes. On a check one out, um, when the next one comes in, if you put in a request, then I can send that to you when mm -hmm. it's available. Yep, through um, our, Right yeah. now I have the Quest headset. I'm hoping to start going in to the Quest 2, which is the new one, but fingers crossed, time will tell. Um, but so far, I've been up from the Quest headset because they're still pretty awesome. They are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And if you do have the old Go headset, just as a heads up, um, Go is no longer going to be supported. Um, Oculus has shifted completely over to the Quest. So I do have some Go's that are just kind of floating around, but Unfortunately, they don't really do much anymore. No. But yeah, I will say the Quest is pretty, uh, pretty slick. There we go. I was um, just showing, note, I was just um, showing on the screen to everybody, so you know, um, where we have our tech kits available at the Encompass Li or the Library Commission website. Um, if you saw that, you can just go to our website, search tech kits, and um, there's a bunch of things that um, I'm getting put that together. In. You could bring that in. Here, you know? Um, there is actually a 3D model that exists of the Merge Cube already. So if you want to explore augmented reality, the Merge Cube has its own SDK. So you can start using that as kind of a launching pad for augmented reality as well. And there's also a developer's kit for augmented reality that goes through Google. Um, they have a quick start guide so you can start playing around with it, start designing your own environments and find out what it's like to be a real augmented reality developer. And there's also That's some cool. different resources on the high tech section that will show you how to get started from a beginner level and also some options for kind of intermediate to advanced. So if you want to play around with this, then start creating your own 3D objects and start pulling them into different environments. That's just kind of an awesome way to get started. Um, 3D yeah, scanners are still kind of hit or miss, but I still have yet to find a really good one. Yeah, I use a structure sensor, which is pretty decent. But I tell you, the new, you know, iOS or the new um, iPhones have LiDAR built in. So mm -hmm. that's pretty sophisticated scanning <laughs> just on yeah. your phone. Yeah. So yeah, here's the browser right here. Using. Yeah, I'm an Android user too. My daughters all use uh, iPhone now, so that's good. I'm always like, hey, let me borrow your phone, please. <laughs> so am I sharing my screen so, that you guys can see in there? Yep. Uh, okay. I can make it really large if you want. And they did, They, by the way, they did uh, do an update where when you make something really large like I am now, the yeah, text geez. looks really good. Like for a while I got, um, very blurry, but I mean, you can see it now. It looks really good, I think. So, yeah, we can see what you're doing now. Move yeah, the window. because yeah. what I want to do yeah. is I want to go and see. How do I share? All right, I'm going to do this again because now share <laughs> and I'm going to do. There we go. There. Now I can see it as me. I had it all on one monitor, and all I could do was all I could see was my browser. And I'm like, no, I want to see what it looks like in spatial. So there it is. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah. And, and the Q robot is actually the easiest robot in there to replicate using Tinkercad or AutoCAD because it's basically all just spheres. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. And so I'm hoping, I mean, I, I, I've heads. been debating on if I'm going to, you know, put one of my digital prints up as an NFT and see if I can make like $8 million or so. That'd be kind of cool, right? <laughs> and then you can fund everything you want. 
then I can fund everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, people are doing it, and then people may, that's crazy, you know? And like I said, that's why Spatial integrates their NFT thing in here now, where you can actually go into a gallery and, uh -huh. um, you know, um, I wonder, I don't know if we all have the same spaces, but there's a couple other art galleries. You guys, now that you have accounts, you might be able to see, but um, there's some other out. So if you actually go in and hit leave, I'm not going to do it now, but you hit leave, it'll show you all the other rooms you've got access to. Um, it, it, you'll be amazed at some of the some of the work people are doing, um, especially with. So there's like public locations people can just go to that are out yeah. there. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Cool. And they have anyway, this is just the beginning. Huh? Yes, they do. Yeah. So if you want, I can try something. I'll show you just a quick thing. Um, so if I wanted to, I could go in here to, oops, that's not the thing I wanted to do. Anyway, I can go in here. I can go in and change my environment. Actually, I wonder, let's try something real quick. This is, uh, I'm just going to try and see if we, if we can do it. So oh. environments. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. It's going to be weird. Yeah, this is obviously very weird, but this is the museum. This is the museum I was talking about. So we did a 3D rendering of this. This is a, our first one. This is a test. Obviously, all the artwork is not where it's supposed to be. Um, but mm -hmm. this is a rendering of our museum. Now, we're going to add more texture to it. Um, but this is what it looks like. So you can actually mm. create a 3D model. And then of any space, and, space. So yeah. if you actually if you actually go over where I am, you can come out. If you look right out this way, oh no, this is the wrong model. Never mind. He actually added the name of the museum over here. So and then by the way, we could all do a selfie too. You know, they have an option where we can do a <laughs> uh, stuff and then the selfie stick. And what's cool, you can hold it up. <laughs> And if you want, you can you can flip it somehow. See if I remember how to do that. Uh, here we go. Flip. And so now we can all be in there and do. See, Christy, if you look over this way, you'll see we get to be in the image together. You guys see that? Oh, interesting. Okay. So. So yeah, you can add, and, and they do a lot with um, the selfies and stuff in here too. It's kind of fun. Yeah, up here. Uh, there they are. <laughs> hey. <laughs> they were, were all in there. It's kind of weird. I look weird right now, especially when I'm talk, talking. My teeth look really white. Yeah, it is. It is. It's cool and it's weird <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. It's definitely weird. It's definitely weird. And just imagine when we get to become even more realistic looking. Mm -hmm. And the eye tracking seems to be working better now, too. I'm going to go back. This is a weird room. It's Obviously, this is not the right one, but you get the idea of what you can do. Mm -hmm. um, as a side fun. note, if you want to experiment with building your own room, or Ooh. building your own, basically doing a 3D rendering of a building, Fusion mm -hmm. 360 has a free hobbyist version that you don't have to pay for. Um, it doesn't nice. have the same functionality as the paid Fusion 360. <coughs> the job done. Yeah. Mm. That's good. Good information. So now we're outside. Mm -hmm. This is pretty nice. Aurora Borealis. See in the like. Northern Lights, yeah. And we're actually standing in the lake. Yeah. And, well. and, uh, <laughs> I can see the campfire with all our artwork and stuff over there. So if you're in it, so the, the thing is, if you're in a space and you actually add artwork and add all your documents and all that stuff, when you go into a different environment, it might be completely not where you think it should be. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, so I'm just gonna jump in here over. and just gonna jump in here. Let everybody know it is a little after 11 o'clock Central Time. Um, show usually goes ooh, um, from 10 to 11. But um, if anybody has any questions or comments or anything you want to ask of Chad or Amanda, um, go ahead and type them in. We're not. We won't wrap up until you have your questions answered and get through everything they want to show us. I um, just want to let people know that um, yes, officially 
you know, it says our show is 10 to 11, but we go as long as it takes to get through everything. So if you have any questions, comments, things you want to know, go ahead and type it in. Um, and I don't know, Chad and Amanda, if you, um, what you want to be finishing up things in here, or did you um, have slides you wanted to finish showing? Probably finish it up in here. The Bulbasaurus kind of missed the grass from before, but it still lives. <laughs> So, any questions pop in? Uh, no, there hasn't been anything else, no. And I don't know. Chad, are you still here? Yeah, he's in the... Oh, wait. Uh, go to meeting there. There we go. Can you guys hear me now? Yep. Cool. Yeah, don't get yourself, yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Uh, for some reason, we ended, when we switched environments, we actually um, were like out in the middle of the water now. It's kind of wild. Yes. <clears throat> I haven't seen the web-based version in a while. It looks pretty cool still. It does. It's uh, it's got some weird things. I sometimes when I first logged in, I could turn myself around, but now I kind of can't. I'm not sure exactly about all of the controls. Yeah, it takes a little while to get used to. I have like I said, I haven't played too much with the web-based version of it. Yeah. But, uh, oh, and if you actually turn around in your physical environment, the phone should track you too. Oh well, I'm on my desktop. Oh. Yeah, the phone does some pretty good stuff too. And with the phone, by the way, you can easily my... switch it to augmented reality. And then you can actually be in your room, in your space still. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I'm going to pop out of this. Actually, since, since it looks like, yeah, you're not in here anymore. Um, so why don't we switch back to you, Amanda, and finish up with the slides? Yep. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Hold on a sec. I am going to make you presenter again. So you should be able to yeah. show your screen again. There we go. Looks good. And I forgot to put my contact slide in here. Um, I actually forgot to do that too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can add it later. Yeah, I can add that. Since these are Google slides, it can be minutes. added to the presentation and the link we give everyone, it'll have everything they need. Perfect. Well, keep in yeah. touch. This was fun. It worked out pretty well, I think. I will put my email in the chat for GoToMeeting for anyone who is here right now. But if you are accessing the recording after this, it should be in the slide deck if you access that. And I just put my email in now. I don't know if, Chad, if you want to do the same. Yeah, for some reason, I can't get back to the chat thing for some reason. Oh, maybe I can copy and paste yours because I have your... Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, I can't I get... Can oh, wait, here it is. Here it is. It came back. So my email is... I'll type it in. There you go. Yeah, definitely keep in touch. And I'll I'll, uh, I'll put my contact slide in real quick before, it, before you go uh, with uploading it. Yeah, perfect. Does anybody have any questions or anything else they want to ask? Go ahead and get it typed in before we wrap things up. Um, do you guys have more slides you want to get through to wrap up talking about uh, spatial and what we're doing today? No, I don't think so. I think it's just important to get in there and, and if you're interested in this kind of thing, just to get in and explore. Mm -hmm. And if you want to just meet in there t sometime and, and talk about the possibilities, um, you got my email, get a hold of mm -hmm. me. I'd love to meet you in there some other time if you want. Um, yeah, just, just let me know and I'd be happy to get in there with you. And if you want to check out a VR headset to gain access to Spatial in the first place, um, I will put in a link again to request a kit if you want to try it out. That's great. That's a great service. And I put that in the link. Just click request kit and you're good to go. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can also check out the Merge Cube for augmented reality and good times were had by all. Yeah, Merge Cubes are fun. Aren't they? Mm -hmm. cool. All right, I am going to, let's see, what do I got going here? I've got a million screens up. Okay. 
I am going to pull presenter control back to my screen again. So there we go. So um, yes, this is our Encompass Li or no, our Library Commission website, um, nlc.nebraska.gov. And we shared the link to you, but also if you go on our search and type in tech, tech well, you gotta spell it right, tech kids. It's our first item here underneath the ones that first come up, it brings you right to that main page and where you can request any of these. This is for Nebraska libraries, of course. The robots. That's great. That's great. Uh, and we might be getting <laughs> more of these, we'll see. Um, uh, these are you know, going out now and uh, we're working on uh, potentially expanding this in some way. Um, oh, and there's library and preparation guides. So if you're new to it, you can get started with it. Yeah, here, everything that, yeah, it isn't just, you know, borrow some of these robots and figure it out. Uh, Amanda's done a great job of putting together um, everything you might need, uh, lesson plans, specifics for the That's librarians, great. for staff, so. Um, great work on all that. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. They've been very popular, right, Amanda? I mean. Yeah. We did have a little, you know, I, it was uh, bad timing. Got these things first set up, uh, what, end of? It was like right before the world ended. Yeah. It was just, you know. <laughs> and then, of course, things could not be lent out um, yeah. to anyone. Um, and then started with the ones that were not the virtual reality, because those are a little more, you know, on your yeah. face. But now, uh, yep, things can go out. People keep, you know, up to them. And, yeah. So definitely look into those tech kits. And this is where I logged in to the spatial when I went to it. I had at least uh, already logged in. That's a spatial website. So I think we will wrap it up for today. Then it just looks like nobody had any uh, desperate questions they need added right now. That's fine. Um, you've got emails in there, and they will be on the slides that we will have available as well. Um, Amanda, do you want to share this link to the slides too? Um, you can put if you put that in the chat for us. Then I'll have that for later. Or do you want to wait and? Uh -huh. I'm going to double check the sharing on it because okay. right now it's shared for editing, I think. If I email them to me, email the link to me later, not a problem. It'll be available with the slot with the recording for everyone. Um, so that will um, officially wrap it up for today's show. Um, I will go to our Encompass Live main page here where um, you've got our upcoming shows here, but I wanted, I said I was gonna show you over at the very bottom is a link to our archive shows. Um, most recent one is at the top of the page. This is one from last week with bed bugs, um, where they had a bunch of different resources, but we had a link to recording and a link to presentation. We'll have the same thing um, here for today's show. Um, it uh, should be available and done uh, by the end of the day tomorrow, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Um, everyone who attended today and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know that the recording is ready for you to go here and watch. Um, we also will post it out to our various uh, social media and other locations out there. We do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. <coughs> Um, you have links to it. This is our page. Um, if you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. You get notifications. Here's a reminder to log in to today's show. Um, we also posted to other social media, as Jason Griff, he mentioned earlier, he saw our tweet and popped in to join us. Um, we always use the hashtag EncompLive for everything for Encompass Live. So uh, Twitter, Instagram, I don't know where else our social media people are putting them, but anything we have out there, it'll be... Um, using that hashtag as well, so you can follow what we are doing. Um, where are we here? For the archives, I will mention too, while you're here, we do have a search feature, so you can look for other old topics, um, see what other what topics we've had on the show and do a search of our, our archives. We have the full archives, or you can limit it to just the most recent 12 months. That is because this is our full show archives. And I'm gonna scroll down a little bit, not all the way, because that would be a little crazy. Um, as you can see, these dates are going back pretty far. Um, this is our full archives. Encompass Live premiered in January 2009. So we have 12, 10, 12 years worth of, of archive shows, and they are all here on this page. 
Um, so do pay attention when you are watching recording. Just look at the original broadcast date. It tells you when it first happened. Um, some of our shows will stand the test of time and the information will still be good, but some things may become outdated. Information will be old. Um, products and services may have changed drastically or not even exist anymore. Uh, links may no longer work because the things aren't out there. So just pay attention um, to what you, the date of, of something you're watching. But uh, we are librarians. This is what we do. We keep things one of the, one of the things we do keep things for historical purposes and we'll always have our recordings up here as long as we have somewhere to host them all right so that's it for today's show um you can sign up for any other future shows we have coming up uh amanda will be back in another couple of weeks to do part three of her teaching technology in the library series as you can see here's part three and part four coming up um, in July. Um, part one and two were um, earlier this month. And we've got the recordings for those. So she's got this four part series that she's doing on teaching technology in the library. So definitely sign up for those if you want to. And we've got our other regular shows interspersed amongst that. And next week we're going to be talking about history. Uh, history Nebraska has some new resources, a new search feature on their website. Um, uh, so the um, Jill Dolberg from uh, and uh, Lindsay Hillgartner from History Nebraska will be with us to talk about taking history online next week. So if you're interested in history of Nebraska and um, what resources they have available online now for you, definitely sign up for that or any of our other future shows. No, thank you everybody for being here with us this morning. Thank you, Amanda, for being here again. Thank you, Chad, for being with us. Hope you feel thank better you. soon. I uh, appreciate it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and, yeah, I definitely uh, yeah. <laughs> um, we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oh, Take thank care, you. guys. Bye-bye.